In this video we're going to look at assembling and solving a system of three rod elements. So Acme has finally got its act together with our brand new rod element we're going to give it a try. So Acme launches their new rod element. Now here's a test shot we're going to do. So it's a three rod element. You see this is built into a wall in a pretty solid manner. And now here's the actual dimensions which include the rod length and the diameter so we can calculate the cross-sectional area and also the material property which is steel. Here are the three stiffness of matrices, one for each rod. And what we're doing here is going to correlate the nodal degrees of freedom as we see physically along the rod to where they occur in each one of the stiffness matrices. So U1 through U4, you can see the first stiffness matrix has U1 and U2, just indicating the nodes there. Second has U2 and U3, again those are the nodal positions, and finally U3 and U4. So that's the mapping we want to actually achieve. Here is a grid which is going to help us map the element stiffness matrices into the overall stiffness matrix. Rod 1's element stiffness matrix is pulled in and positioned. Now we do the same with Rod 2, notice the overlap. And finally we pull down Rod 3 and its stiffness term is also assembled in there. And now we can just tidy up the layout of the matrix a little bit. That looks better. And now we're showing where the stiffness terms overlap. First of degree of freedom U2 and then also degree of freedom U3. So those two stiffness terms combine to give that full assembly. Now the other terms in this assembled matrix have zero stiffness, so we just populate the rest of the matrix with the zeros as appropriate. And that gives us the full assembled stiffness matrix. So now we can recap on the component stiffness matrix. U2 and U3 are where there's connectivity existing between their respective elements. If the connectivity didn't exist, the model would be broken. And now we're putting in the numerical values for the three rods, so developing K which is EA over L. That's the scalar axial stiffness term we developed on our previous videos. It's a good idea to try and get a feel for the relative stiffness of components in a structure. Here the relative stiffnesses do in fact reflect the geometry of the rods. The numerical values are inserted into the element stiffness matrices and there's a reminder of the geometry. The numerical values of the assembled stiffness matrix are shown together with the overlaps. And finally, here are the numbers calculated for the full system stiffness matrix. Unfortunately, if we try to invert this matrix, then the solution just blows up. I used an Excel spreadsheet and I just got a reference error. Now, if you're a mathematician, this is described as a singular matrix. It's essentially like a set of simultaneous equations with too many unknowns. A better engineering analogy would be if we gave a specification to our test lab and we forgot to define the constraints that we're going to apply to the experiment. So what should be a nice safe static test turns into a violent dynamic test, force equals mass times acceleration. And now we're in much better shape because the structure is properly constrained to ground. So what we have to do is to partition out the row and column associated with U1 from the matrix. U1 has been set to zero. And now the condensed or constrained stiffness matrix is shown. Number of degrees of freedom have dropped from four down to three in our system. And now it will solve OK. It is now a non-singular matrix. So the basic issue that we always face is that if the model is not fully constrained, we get rigid body motion, and then we get a singular matrix. And that's something we've always got to guard against in a model. One of the key points that rigid body motion, and hence singularity, is not a function of load balance, it's just all about the constraints. And now for our usual spot quiz, and the first question is how many degrees of freedom in the constrained model? There is a link here to take you back if you're not sure. The next question is what is a singular matrix? either maths or an engineering answer. Again, there's a link back if you're not sure. Now here's a final question. How many FE analysts do you think have never ever forgotten to properly constrain their models? The next video in the series, uh, we finally see the ACME solution for stresses in the rods. 
and we look at some of the limitations of the very simple rod example we've been looking at. There is also a link here to the next video.